We're on problem 79. A small business owner must hire seasonal workers as the need arises. The following list shows the number of employees hired monthly for a five month period. Okay, so we hired four in the first month, 13 in the second month, so on. If the mean of these data, remember data is a plural, I always say this data, but if they say, they correctly say, if the mean of these data is approximately seven. So the mean is just the average, right? So they're saying the average of these numbers is seven. Fair enough. If you add all of these up and divide by five, you'll get approximately seven. What is the population standard deviation for these data? So uh, population, and we'll, you know, I'll make a, I'll make a statistical playlist one day where I talk about the difference between a population standard deviation and a sample standard deviation, all of that. But the population standard deviation. It's it's just so you have an intuition. It's a it's a it's a measure of, on average, how far are each of these numbers from the mean. And it's not exactly how the average of how far they are from the mean. But I'll show you that in a second. It's actually the square. It's it's the square root of the average of the square distances of how far each of these are from the mean. And, and that that might sound crazy for a second, but when you, we actually work it out at, all out, the math isn't too bad. So what we'll do first is figure out the variance, the variance. The variance, and that's the notation for the variance. And the standard deviation actually is just the square root of this. So it's easy if you have the variance; it's very easy to figure out the standard deviation. But the variance, and just to give you give you the intuition, it's equal to the average of the squared distances, squared distances from the mean, from the mean, from the mean. So essentially, I say, okay, how far is four from seven? Oh, it's three away, and I square it. I say, okay, that the square distance is nine. The square distance here, well, let me figure it out. So let's actually write them down. Four minus seven. Let me actually calculate it. So I'll do it here. Four minus seven is minus three. If I were to square that, I get nine. So the square of the distance from four to seven is nine, right? So that's a squared distance. So the square of the distance from thirteen to seven. See, they're six apart. You square them, and you, you and because we're squaring, it doesn't matter if we do seven minus thirteen or thirteen minus seven, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So anyway, thirteen minus seven is six. That squared is thirty-six. Then I have five minus seven. That's minus two squared is equal to four. Then I have six minus seven. That's one negative one squared is equal to one, and then I have nine minus seven. That's two squared is equal to four. So this the nine is the square of how far four is from seven. Thirty six is the square of how thirteen is from seven. So each of these are the square distances, right? Of of each of the each of the data points from the mean. That's where we got the seven from. The the average of of these numbers. Now we said the variance is the average of the square distances. So it's just the average of these five numbers. So what's the average of these five numbers? It's going to be nine plus thirty six is forty five. Plus four is forty-nine. Plus one is fifty. Plus one is fifty-four. So it's going to be fifty-four divided by one, two, three, four, five divided by five. So the variance is equal to the average of the squared distances, and that's what ten and four fifths is equal to ten point eight. So that's the variance. And they want to, They don't want the variance. They don't want the population variance. They want the population standard deviation. Well, that's just the square of the variance. And you can see, since you're saying the square of the square distances, it kind of becomes close to the average of the real distances. But it's actually not that, and I, I don't want to confuse you right now. For, for the sake of this problem, let's just take the square, the square root of this. So the standard deviation is just equal to the square root of the variance, which is equal to the square root of 10.8. And what is that? We Let's see, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So it's 10. The square root of 10.8 is going to be pretty close to 3, between 3 and 4, but a lot closer to 3. And if we look at all the choices, the only one that even comes close is this one. And I think if you actually found the square root, it's actually very close to 3.3. .3. Next problem. Next problem. James found the mean and standard deviation of the set of numbers given above. If he adds 5 to each number, which of the following result? All right, if you add 5, the mean will be multiplied by 5. No, 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 that's not right. Because if you add 5 to each of these numbers, the mean will just become 5 bigger. right? You're kind of just shifting over the center to some degree, the, where you're measuring the center by the average over 5. Actually, I could, even, I could actually show it to you. If I said 3 plus 5, and I'm going to add that to 6 plus 5, 
plus 2 plus 5, right? I'm adding 5 to every number. Plus 2 plus 5, plus 1 plus 5, plus 7 plus 5, plus 5 plus 5. All of that divided by, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers, right? All of that divided by 6. This is the same thing as, let me write this. This is a, if we, you know, we can get rid of the parentheses. All we're doing is adding. So that's the same thing as 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 7 plus 5. I just took the first terms in each of these, right? Plus, how many 5s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Plus 6 times 5. All of that over 6. Well, this is going to be, this is, this, so this is equal to, let's see, 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 7 plus 5 over 6. Let me scroll down a little bit. Plus, what's 6 times 5 divided by 6? Well, that's just 5. So this is the average of the original set of numbers, right? And now when you add 5 to all of them, the average of all of them combined is just going to be the original average plus 5. So you're just shifting the average to the right. So this is not right. You're not multiplying the mean by 5. You're just adding 5 to the mean. That's not right. The standard deviation will increase by 5. Well, in the last video, you saw that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Uh, but, but either both of them are a measure of kind of the average distance of the numbers from the mean or from, from the average. So even if you shift everything by 5, right? the mean shifts by 5, all the numbers shift by 5, they're Distances from the mean aren't going to change, actually. The standard deviation actually won't change. So this isn't right. The standard deviation won't increase, won't increase by 5. These numbers aren't going to become further away from the average. So that's not right. The mean will not change. Well, no, we, we know that the mean will change. I just showed you that the mean will actually increase by 5 right, when all the numbers are increased by 5. So that's not right. So we already know that d is probably the answer, but let's make sure. The standard deviation will not change. Right. In general, the kind of the average dispersion or how far on average the numbers are away from the mean won't change. All the numbers are going to increase by 5 and the mean is going to increase by 5. So how far the numbers are from the mean or their variance won't change, kind of the square of their distances won't change. And if the variance doesn't the variance doesn't change, then the mean won't change. So the answer is definitely D. And we're all done. See you in the next